Good evening, brothers and sisters in the faith. Welcome to another episode of the BQA, the Bible Question and Answer. And our topic for today has connection with our celebration of the Autumn Feast. What are the days of awe? Now, before we go ahead and answer this question, let us first offer this prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and gracious Abba Yahuwah, we gather before your presence. We are truly thankful for blessing your people, granting us wisdom and power that comes from you as we study your holy words in preparation for our upcoming feasts, the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. We ask for added guidance to the power of your spirit. Our King Yahushua, may you please dwell amongst your servants and strengthen the faith of your chosen ones. Father, please cleanse us and forgive us all our sins. We ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Okay, praises be to our loving Father that we are again able to meet together for this special BQA episode, Bible Question and Answer, where we're going to look at a question connected, in fact, directly connected to our present celebration of the Adam Feast. As you know, yesterday... We began the autumn feast by observing the Feast of Trumpets. It's one of the three autumn feasts that we're going to be observing. We observed yesterday already the Feast of Trumpets, which leads to the Feast of Atonement or the Day of Atonement. And so the Day of Atonement is preceded by trumpets because in a way, the trumpets is called the awakening blast. And so it's an awakening call, a call for each and every one of us to repent. And when it comes to the word repent, we know it means a turning away from sin and a turning on to God. And so that's the whole purpose of the trumpets, not only to rehearse for the upcoming parpazzo, the upcoming day of our King Yahushua HaMashiach, but also to repent in preparation for the Day of Atonement. Now, according to Jewish tradition, the beginning of the Feast of Trumpets, where the awakening blast is sounded, is the first day of the Day of Awe, and it concludes with the Day of Atonement. Now, since the Day of Atonement is observed on the 10th day of the seventh month, this means that in totality, the days of awe, according to Jewish tradition, is 10 days. 10 days of awe, 10 days of repentance. Of course, there is no explicit biblical command that we are to observe these 10 days of awe. But the principle applies because the principle is all about preparing the heart and the mind, turning away from sin and turning to Yahuwah and to Yahusha. And so this the days of awe begins with the Feast of Trumpets, where trumpets are blown. We learned yesterday that there are four different kinds of blasts, and each one has a corresponding meaning or significance. For example, the tekiah, the one long straight blast, this is the blast that is connected to the coming of the king. In this case, it is none other than Yahusha HaMashiach, the Shevarim, the three short blasts, well, that refers to repentance. And teruah, the nine quick blasts in short succession, when you heard it yesterday, kind of makes you want to move your body, right? Because it's very lively. Nine quick blasts in short succession. This is to serve to awaken the soul, to wake up the individual and call them to repentance, shavarin, because the king is coming, tekiah, and of course, the tekiah gedola, that represents the awakening of the dead, the resurrection on the day of the last trumpet. So the awakening blast of the Feast of Trumpets, it serves to warn the people that judgment is at hand. This is why the Feast of Trumpets is also often called Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. Now, why is the Feast of Trumpets referred to as Yom Hadin? a day of judgment, which connects it to the Day of Atonement, which is also a kind of day of judgment. You see, when Yahuwah makes choices from heaven above and casts judgment upon the people of the earth, it's called a day 
of judgment. And the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 58, verse 11, so that men will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. And so the Israelite people, the Hebrew people believe the day of trumpets or the feast of trumpets, according to Jewish tradition, something happens. What is their belief? What is their tradition? Well, they believe that on this day of judgment, on the Feast of Trumpets, people's names are written in one of two books. The Book of Life or the Book of Death. Now, how many here want to have their names written in the Book of Death? Nobody wants that because that means your life is going to be condemned. You see, the people of Israel also believe that the Feast of Trumpets is also the head of the year. It's like the new year. And so because it's a new year, if your name is in the book of life, you're going to have a prosperous year. If your name is in the book of death, you're not going to have a prosperous year at all. And so they believe that at the outset, the beginning of their civil year, well, they want to make sure that they are in the book of life. And so day of judgment, the feast of trumpets. However, it's not a day of hard judgment. What do you mean? Well, it simply means there are some rabbis who believe that when Yahuwah writes the names of people either in the book of life or in the book of death, it can still change. Why? Because they believe that Yahuwah can change his mind, which is a good thing for all of us, right? Because this means we have hope. Bible says Yahuwah changed his mind and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. So this is a surprising passage uh, for many people because many people think Yahuwah God does not change. How many here believe that Yahuwah God does not change? Yes and no. The answer to that question is yes, Yahuwah does not change. And at the same time, Yahuwah changes. Well, how can that be, brother? It all depends on what you are talking about. For example, in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, 6 to 7, I, Yahuwah, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. So here it's plain and clear. Yahuwah himself says, I, Yahuwah, do not change. So if we were to ask you a question, brothers and sisters, does Yahuwah change? What is your answer? No. He does not change. But the question, does Yahuwah change, is different from the question, does Yahuwah change his mind? You see, there's a difference in those two questions. Why do we believe Yahuwah can change his mind? Well, we read verse 6. Let's read verse 7. Ever since the time of your fathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahuwah Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? And so in this passage, in verse 7, does Yahuwah give the opportunity to have his mind changed? What does it say in verse 7? Bible says, I will return to you. If Yahuwah returns to a people who before Yahuwah was not with, isn't that a change? Yahuwah changed his mind from not returning to returning. So he changed his mind. Yes, Yahuwah does not change, but he can change his mind in response to repentance. That's what it means when the Bible says, return to me. And so Yahuwah, when he looks at his people, he gives them the opportunity to change, to repent, and to return to him. And when he sees his people change and return to him, he responds by changing his mind. And so when the Bible says, Yahweh return, he went from not returning to returning. In other words, he changed his mind. You see, what does not change is Yahweh's character. It does not change. He is holy, loving, compassionate, merciful, because that's the meaning of his name, right? He does not change in character. He is always holy. He is always loving. He is always compassionate. And he is always 
merciful. What changes Yahuwah's action? Because he changes it according to our repentance. This is good news for each and every one of us. Because the fact that Yahuwah's mind changes and can, can change in response to our repentance means we have hope. Because when we look at our life, it's far from perfect. Perhaps there are some who have lived their life far from Yahuwah. And so they experience the pain and misery of living a life separated from God. It's not a fun way to live. It's not a good way to live. The only and best way to live is to live with Yahuwah, not apart from Him. So if we're living, if we have been living our life away from our Father, not listening to His commands, not following His precepts and His ways, we have an opportunity to change. And when we change, Yahuwah's attitude and relationship with us also changes. You see, the modifier unchanging does not mean that Yahuwah cannot forgive, restore, heal, or do anything because any act essentially means a change in some sense. And so Yahuwah is actually waiting. He is waiting for people to change so that he can change his mind about them. And so what does Yahuwah want from his people? He says, return to me. And so I want to look at that word return to me because it has direct connection to the days of awe. When the Bible says return to me, the Hebrew word used is the word shub. S-U-B, shub, Hebrew word 7725, which means to return, to turn back, or to turn. From that word turn, you get the word teshuva. Teshuva. And the word teshuva is really the turning of the heart to Yahuwah. And so this whole season of the feasts, beginning with the blowing of trumpets, actually even before the blowing of trumpets, because many Ancient rabbis believe that at the beginning of the sixth month, the first day of the sixth month, that's when Teshuva begins, which is the turning of one's heart away from sin and turning to God. That's Teshuva. <laughs> I know it's a new word for everyone. Can everyone say Teshuva? Teshuva means to return to God, to turn to God. This is what this, the seasons, the holidays, the feast of Yahuwah is all about. It's all about turning to God, which makes sense. Because when you think of the feast of Yahuwah, you know what Yahuwah did? He turned his focus to mankind. The seasons, the Moedim, is about Yahuwah turning his attention to mankind to save, redeem, and restore mankind. And so it's but right. Our response is also to turn to God by turning away from sin. So this is the theme of our feasts. Trumpets, Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. It's about turning our heart to the Yahuwah. This is why the 10 days of awe are often and actually better identified as the 10 days of repentance. Aseret Yemei Teshuvah, the 10 days of repentance because when the trumpet sounds on the feast of trumpets some people refer to it as Rosh Hashanah the head of the year but of course Yahuwah said the first the first head of the year is Nisan or barley Aviv right back in March around that area and so that's what I believe I believe the head of the year is actually Aviv uh, but nevertheless the Jewish people today they believe the, the head of the year is uh, the, the Feast of Trumpets. And so on the Feast of Trumpets, when that sounded, it sets, the, it, it leads the people to to repent because it opportunity for their names to be erased from the Book of Death and to be added where? The Book of Life. And also, if they're in the Book of Life, for their names not to be erased from the Book of Life and transferred to the Book of Death. This is why these 10 days of repentance, these 10 days of awe, were considered the most solemn days for the people of Israel. Because when Yom Kippur happens, when the Day of Atonement comes at the conclusion of the 10 days of awe, 
the books are going to close. The books are going to be sealed. And so while the trumpets have sounded and you have several days in preparation before the Day of Atonement, what, what do the Jewish people believe? Isaiah 55 verse 7, let the wicked leave the way of life and change the way of thinking. Let them turn, Teshuvah, to our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. And so this is what they apply during the season of Teshuvah. It's an opportunity for people who live wicked lives to change their way of thinking, to turn to Yahuwah. The Bible says if you do that, Yahuwah is going to be merciful and be quick to forgive. And so the trumpet sounds. They're not sure. It might, is my name in the book of life? Is my name in the book of death? And so what do you do? Well, the next couple of days, actually the next nine days, what do you do? You do your best to repent and to return to God. Because in verse 6, it says, seek Yahuwah while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. In other words, after the 10 days are have passed, it's too late. And so before the 10 days pass, before Yom Kippur happens, before the Day of Atonement comes, the expectation is you have already done your best to turn to Yahuwah, to find him while he is near. Because at the conclusion of the 10 days of awe, or the 10 days of repentance on the Day of Atonement, the books will be sealed. All judgments will be final. No more opportunity for repentance. This is why, again, the 10 days of awe are the most solemn days for the people of Israel. And the Day of Atonement is considered the most holy day throughout the whole year. Did you know that? Because that's the day when judgment can come upon them. And so Yahuwah is giving Israel like another chance. Trumpet sounds, you're not in the book of life, I'm giving you one another chance. But this is your last chance, so you better get it right. And so when Yom Kippur happens, judgment happens upon the people of Israel, and those who were not forgiven, their names are removed from the book of life, and they're added to the book of death. And so during these days of awe, do you know what the people of Israel focus, focus on? They focus on repentance by doing good works, restoring their relationship with Yahuwah God, and restoring their relationship with one another. And so during this time in Israel, people will be kind to each other, forgive each other, try to reconcile with one another, because they want to make sure they do good work. So on the day of Yom Kippur, they're going to have their names added into the book of life. And they're going to have a prosperous new year and they can celebrate with God's presence in their life. Now, of course, this is the Hebrew tradition. But we know there is such a thing as a book of life. Do you believe that? Do you believe there's a book of life? Yeah. Why do we believe there's a book of life? That's because the book of life is not just based on Israeli or Hebrew tradition. It's not just based on Jewish tradition. The book of life is actually in the Holy Scripture. So what does the Bible teach us about the book of life? Well, let's read what it says in Revelation 20, 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone that found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The Bible tells us here in this passage how important the book of life is, right? Do you see that? Do you see how important the book of life is? Bible says if your name is not written in the book of life, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be cast with her into the lake of fire. Nobody wants to be cast into the lake of fire. This is why we need to make sure our names are listed in the book of life, which is in heaven. Now, there are some religious organizations who capitalize on this or use this to invoke fear among the followers by saying things such as, if you are registered in our church's registry, your names are written in the book of life. 
However, if your names are removed from our registry, your names are also removed from the book of life. That's not what the Bible says. Because if that was true, what does that mean? It means the book of life has been given to those who lead that church. And that's not what Yahweh did. To whom did he give authority over the book of life? Revelation 13 verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, the Antichrist, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. To whom did our father Yahuwah endorse the authority over the book of life over? It is to Yahusha, the Lamb of God. This is why the book of life is the book of the Lamb. And so who has authority over the book? Human beings here on earth. Not the Pope. Not the so-called executive minister of any church organization. But it is Yahushua, the Lamb of God, who has authority over the book of life. So if we want our names to be in the book of life, then we need to be added by the Lamb, by our King, Yahushua. Well, who are those? who have obtained eternal salvation because they have their names hid in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because Yahusha is the authority over the Book of Life who is given eternal life through Yahusha. Let's read the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, and the verses 12. When Christ went through the tent and entered once and for all into the most holy place, he did not take the blood of goats and bulls to offer as a sacrifice. Rather, he took his own blood and obtained eternal salvation for us. The Bible says Yahushua did something that is in reference to what feast? What feast is this in connection with? The day of atonement. Yeah, people say it's Passover. In a way, it's connected to Passover because it, both Passover and the Day of Atonement involve the, the, uh, the death of our king, uh, Yahusha, right? But it focuses on different aspects. So Passover, the lamb, he served as the lamb who died. For the Day of Atonement, he serves as the high priest who offered up himself. Remember, on the Day of Atonement, it was the most holy day for the people of Israel. Because on that day, either Israel as a nation would be judged or they would be saved, depending on the work of the high priest. If the high priest sacrificed and work in the tent is accepted by Yahuwah, Israel would be blessed. If it's rejected, Israel would be cursed. This is why when the trumpet sounds, the people of Israel... What are they called to do? Repent. So that when the high priest will per perform his ceremony, when he enters the most holy place to perform the ceremony of the Day of Atonement, then it would be accepted and Israel would be forgiven. Their names would be in the book of life. This is what they believed. But for us, those who belong to Yahusha, we don't have to worry about a high priest because we already have the high priest who did something that could not have been done before him. What was that? As the high priest, he offered himself sacrifice. And so he entered the most holy place in the tabernacle in the temple in heaven, and he offered himself as the perfect sacrifice obtaining our eternal redemption and our eternal salvation. And so Yahushua when he died on the cross, not only does he fulfill the Passover sacrifice, he also fulfills the Day of Atonement sacrifices. You see, there are many sacrifices throughout Israel, right? In the, in the different ceremonies of Israel, you had the Passover sacrifices, you also had the Day of Atonement sacrifices. Yahusha fulfilled them all. Yahusha fulfilled the Day of Atonement for us when he became our high priest. And offered himself for our eternal redemption and salvation. This is why by the shed blood of Yahusha, those who belong to him, guess what? Their names, their names are added 
in the book of life. Why? Because Yahusha now is their high priest who died for them. No other high priest has done that. Look at the high priest of Israel. Look at the history of the Day of Atonement. What did the high priest do? He offered up animals. But this high priest, Yahusha HaMashiach, he did not offer up animals. What did he offer up? <laughs> Himself. And this is why, because of that, we have been purchased eternal life. And our names are written in the book of life. And so that being the case, if our names are already in the book of life, then what is the relevance of Teshuvah for us today? Now, what again is the definition and meaning of Teshuvah? It's a turning away from sin and a turning on to God. Teshuvah. It's called repentance. But, you know, oftentimes when we think of the word repentance, it's like we don't do something anymore. We don't commit sin anymore. And that's it. But Teshuvah is more than repentance. It's all about turning away from sin and then turning to who? To God. That's Teshuvah. Is the season of Teshuvah, is it so relevant to us, for, for us, who are followers of our King Yahusha today? I believe so. You see, the season of Teshuvah is connected even with those who follow our King Yahusha. Because Yahusha gives the following warning to those who belong to him. I think you know this passage very well, or at least you should. Let's read it anyways. Revelation 3, 1 to 2. Here it is. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Sardis. This is the message from the one who has the sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. I know all the things you do and that you have reputation for being alive but you were dead wake up strengthen what little remains for even what is left is almost dead i find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my god so here's our king yahusha he's speaking to those who are in the ecclesia in this case the one in sardis right but this applies to all of us who follow our king yahusha what does he say he says there are people who belong to the ecclesia who have a reputation for being alive, but in actuality, they are dead. And so that's not good. Externally, they look like true followers of Yahusha, but when you examine the fruit, when you examine them inwardly, it doesn't match what they do outwardly. In other words, outwardly, they're alive. Inwardly, they are dead. And Yahusha says to them, strengthen what little remains. Now what does that mean? To strengthen what little remains. When our King Yahushua says strengthen what little remains, how can we actually do that? Well, let's read uh, 3 to 4. We read 1 to 2. Let's now read 3 down to 4. Go back to what you heard and believe at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. Yet there are some in the church and service who have not soiled their clothes, who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. You notice what our King Yahusha is instructing those who are in service to do, so that what little strength they have or what they have that remains can be strengthened. What did Yahusha say for them to do? What did he say? Repent. Repent. In other words, to turn from one's sins and turn to Yahusha. They have to wake up. This is why during this season, when the shofar is blown, when the trumpets are sounded, our soul should be awakened and repent and return to Yahusha. So for those who belong to the Ecclesia, this principle of repenting, waking up, it still applies to us today. It should apply to us today because repentance is all about building that relationship with our king. Because Yahusha says, those who truly repent 
what are they able to do? You see it in the last sentence? What's the purpose of repentance? What's the purpose of repentance? So that we can walk with who? Yahusha. Yahusha saves us. He pays for the penalty of our sins. But he also wants us to walk with him. This is called sanctification. We're justified by his blood, but we need to also be sanctified by our works, by following him, repenting from our sins. And if we are to do this, if we are to repent, what is the reward of our king? Yahusha. Let's read verse 5. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life. But I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. And so, beloved brethren, during this season of trumpets, during the season of atonement, the season of tabernacles, let us focus on walking with Yahusha, living a life of repentance so that we will always be with him. And he promises, I will never erase their names from the book of life because they are mine. We don't have to worry just like the Jewish people who, because of their tradition, every time the Day of Atonement comes, they are in fear that their names are going to be erased from the Book of Life. Beloved brethren, belong to Yahusha. And we walk with Yahusha. He assures us our names will not be removed or erased from the Book of Life. And so the season of Teshuvah applies to us as well. Yahusha commands us to wake up, to repent, and to live a victorious life. Why else is the season of Teshuvah also relevant to us today? Let's read Romans now, chapter 2, 4 down the planet. Or perhaps you despise his tolerance and patience. Surely you know that God is kind because he's trying to lead you to repent. But you have a hard and stubborn heart, and so you are making your own punishment even greater on the day when God's anger and righteous judgment will be revealed. And so this is a warning, this time from the Apostle Paul, about the kindness of God. I mean, it's good that God is kind. It's good that God is patient. Because if God was not patient with us, I mean, what would, where, where would we be now if God was not patient with us? But sometimes people take the patience of God, the kindness of God, and abuse his grace. And so they think because God is kind, God is patient, God is forgiving, I'm just going to live my life the way I want to live it. But that's not the purpose of God's kindness. What's the purpose of God's kindness and patience? What does Apostle Paul say? It is to lead us to do what? To lead us to repent. But sometimes we're so stubborn. Our heart is hard, our heart is hard and stubborn. This is why we need to be awakened by the shofar blast. The awakening blast should wake up that soul and spirit inside of us so that we can repent and return to our king, Yahusha. If we do this, what's the good result? What's the reward? Let's read 6 down to 8. For God will reward every person according to what he has done. Some people keep on doing good and seek glory, honor, and immortal life. To them, God will give eternal life. Other people are selfish and reject what is right. In order to follow what is wrong, on them, God will pour out his anger and fury. So the Bible tells us that if we will respond with repentance, because of the kindness and patience of our Father. And because of that response of repentance, we will pursue what is good, what is glorious, what is honorable. We will pursue eternal life, our reward, eternal life. The Bible says, Yahuwah will bless us. But if we will remain selfish, Yahuwah is going to punish us. And we don't want to be punished by God. I mean, in a way, it's good to be punished by God. God's discipline sometimes is the only way that works for some people. Because they're so stubborn, the only way that works is hard discipline from God. Why are we going to wait for God's hard discipline before we take action and repent and return to our Father? And so we need to repent. 
we need to take repentance seriously because we want to preserve our relationship with the Father and His Son. So that's number two. Do not despise the kindness and patience of God by not repenting. Let's take let's make the most of the opportunity that God is giving us. What else? Well, let's read 2 Corinthians 5:10. Why else um does the season of Teshuva relevant and applicable to the followers of Yahushua? 2 Corinthians 5.10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Why also must we take seriously repentance and returning to Yahuwah and Yahusha? That's because all of us will face and appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We talked all about this before, right? This is different from the white throne judgment. What is this judgment called? The Bima judgment. This is for judgment where Yahusha will examine us for our good works and test those good works so that we can be rewarded or for some lose those rewards. And that's not something that we want to happen. This is why when the trumpet sounds, it should alert us. We need to be, we need to remember that one day we're going to face a judgment seat of Yahusha. And when we face a judgment seat of Yahusha, what can happen? Let's read Corinthians and the quality of each person's work will be seen when the day of Christ exposes it. For on that day, fire will reveal everyone's work. The fire will test it and show its real quality. If what was built on the foundation survives the fire, the builder will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burnt up, then he will lose it. But he himself will be saved as if he had escaped through the fire. The Bible tells us when we face the judgment seat of our King Yahusha, we're going to be tested. The works that we have done in his name we're going to present to Yahusha. It will be tested by fire. And so our good works, if it survives the fire, we shall receive our reward. But if it doesn't survive the fire, we will lose our reward. The Bible says you will be saved, but you're not going to have the reward. And the experience will be something like being barely saved out of a fire. It's like in a burning building, you barely escape from the fire. I mean, you're you're glad you're alive, but at the same time, you wish there was no fire in the in the first place. You wish that you you, yeah, you would have kept all of your rewards in the first place. And so the apostle John tells us, let's strive and do our best not to, to receive our full reward, not to lose any of our rewards. And so we need to be careful with our life. We need to make the most of our calling and election in the Yahusha. Why? In Matthew 12, 36, 37. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you'll be acquitted. And by your words you will be condemned. Even for those who belong to Yahusha, we face judgment. The Bema judgment of Christ. And in this judgment, what's going to be tested is not just our works, but even our words. Did you see that? Even our words are going to, by your words, you will be acquitted, or by your words, you will be condemned. And so we should be careful with our words. We'll be careless. Be careful with our words. And so, brethren, the season of Teshuvah when the trumpets are blown, when we have these days of awe, these days of repentance, it should remind all of us to live our lives carefully and not carelessly. And so we will face the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema judgment. So for these reasons, Yahusha commands us to wake up, repent, and live a victorious life. And he promises our names will not be removed from the book of life. Do not despise the kindness and patience of God by not repenting. 
And all of us, keep in mind, we're going to face the judgment seat of Yahusha. And so when we are in this life here on earth, our focus should be pleasing Yahuwah, pleasing Yahusha. When we belong to Yahusha, are we saved? Yeah, we're saved. But the question now is, are we pleasing our Savior? Because if you're living your life on earth, not pleasing the Savior, it's not going to be a pleasant life. But if you're living your life on earth, not only, uh, if you're living your life on earth, pleasing the Savior, not only will you be saved, you're going to enjoy the reward of Yahusha, of Yahuwah being pleased with us. And so when you think of the rewards of Yahuwah, the rewards of Yahusha, I mean, what do you think is the greatest reward? I mean, if I were to ask you right now, because we're going to be saved, right? We belong to Yahusha. We have faith in our King Yahusha. So we're going to be saved. We're waiting for judgment. I mean, we're waiting for the trumpet to sound. And we're going to receive in the lasting life. We're going to be saved. And we're going to get rewards. If I were to ask you right now, what do you think would be the greatest reward that we can receive? What would that be? What is our greatest reward? What would you want to receive from our King? You probably are thinking a lot of things, but really don't want to say anything because maybe what you're going to say might not be approved by God. And that when you think about it, what is really the greatest reward that Yahuwah and Yahusha can give his followers? You know, when it, when it comes to Teshuvah, like what we already mentioned, and I'm hoping the theme is kind of a already immersed in our minds and our hearts, the theme of Teshuvah, which is the theme of the feasts. When you look at all the feasts, the seven feasts, really it's about turning from sin and turning to who? To God. Why is that? Because the feast was initiated by Yahuwah. For what purpose? For the sake of man. Not for his sake, but for the sake of man. And so the feasts were born because Yahuwah decides to turn his attention, his heart, and his love to mankind. He did his part. Now we have to do our part. Well, what's our part? Now we have to turn our attention to who? To Yahuwah. He said he turned his attention to us. We need to turn our attention to him. Turn away from sin and turn to Yahuwah. Turn to God. What does that mean? When the Bible says, turn to God, what is the ultimate purpose of repentance? The ultimate purpose of repentance is the ultimate reward for us. What is that? Fellowship. Relationship with Yahuwah and Yahusha. That's our greatest reward. And so today, the second day of the Jewish tradition of the days of all, today is the second day. Yesterday was the first day. We have the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, all the way up to the tenth day, which is the day of atonement. From today until that time, what should we be doing? We should be turning away from sin and turning to who? Yahuwah and Yahusha. In other words, we should repent so that we can enhance and improve our relationship with Yahuwah and Yahusha. And so in the days that remain, what should we be focused on doing? James 4, 8 to 10. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. What should we focus on doing in these days leading up to the Day of Atonement? We should do our best to draw near to God. During the days of Israel, on the day of atonement, there's only one person who is able to draw near to God. Who is that? The high priest. Right? On that one day of atonement, he can bring himself close to God. Today, because we belong to Yahusha, we can draw close to God. But for us to draw close to God, for us to draw close to the Son of God, what do we need to do? We need to cleanse our hands. We need to purify our hearts. 
We need to take our sins seriously. We need to examine self and mourn over the sins that we have committed, weep because of our sins and shortcomings, and then humble ourselves and present ourselves to Yahuwah as a, as a living sacrifice. Humility is the way to draw near the Father. Humility is what Yahuwah is looking for because with true humility, we see our true selves and our true selves, despite our best efforts to live a righteous and holy life, our true selves is so severely lacking. Even those who are righteous, they are but filthy rag in the eyes of the Father. And so by humility, Yahuwah gives us, we give ourselves the opportunity for Yahuwah to lift us up. That's what we want to happen, especially on the Day of Atonement. He will lift us up because we will feel his abiding presence. And so if we will pursue righteousness, holiness, if we will truly repent and practice bringing ourselves near to the Father, what can we experience, especially on the Day of Atonement? Let's read the final passage of our studies today. The book of Hebrews. 1922. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Yahusha. By his death, Yahusha opened a new and life giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Beloved brethren, let us do our best to repent and to return to the Father through his son, Yahusha. Let us mourn our sins and humble ourselves. Let us seek the presence of our Father let us seek the presence of our King Yahusha. Why? Because Yahusha gave us a living way through the curtain. Prior to this, only the high priest on one day of the year can enter the presence of the Father. But now we, we too can enter the presence of the Father. Yahusha has opened a new and life giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And so the command for all of us is let's go right into the presence of God. The presence of God, that is what we truly need. And that is our greatest reward on earth and in heaven. Because when we are in the presence of God, we can feel his love, his compassion. We can feel his glory embracing us. And that's what we were called to do. That's what we were created for. Beloved brethren, may the day of atonement service for all of us be an experience of awe. Because we feel the mighty presence of Yahuwah, Yahusha, in our life. Let us stand and we shall pray. Most holy and everlasting Father, Yahuwah Abba, thank you. Because of your love, you took your attention upon us, focused upon us because of your love and compassion. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a covenant relationship with you. And so now, as we have the opportunity, teach us to properly repent, to turn from sin, and to turn our hearts to you, to see your face, and to feel your presence. Father, Abba, may you please bless us as we prepare for the Day of Atonement. Help us to understand the meaning of what afflicting our souls represent during our time today so that we can be fully prepared to receive and experience the awesome presence of your glory. Our King Yahusha, thank you for you are our high priest who gave himself as a sacrifice that we can be given a new and living way through the curtain to experience your presence and the presence of Abba. May you be with us in our preparations. Every day, may your presence be felt in our life. 
Father, bless your people all over the world. Strengthen always our faith and cleanse us of all our sins. We ask everything, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. Beloved brethren, thank you so much for attending our Bible study for today. Just a few reminders. Uh, first of all, there's no BHP tomorrow. There's no Bible, so there's no uh, Bible history project tomorrow. Tomorrow, let's uh, spend time in prayer and meditation and reflecting upon our life so that we can restore a connection with our Father through Yahusha. Also, let's not forget this coming weekend, we have our regular worship service. However, the topic of our worship service lesson Will be a, it will, will be about preparing for the Day of Atonement. And so the title is Afflict Your Souls. Okay, this is one of the teaching uh, during the Day of Atonement that is in principle applicable to us as well. And so we will have the Tagalog at uh, 10 p.m. and also the English at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also this weekend, we have our children's ministry, September 6, September 7. And Next week, we're going to study the meaning of the Day of Atonement ceremonies as a BQA topic in preparation for our Day of Atonement special worship service, which will be on a Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is all. And may Yahweh Abba and Yahweh bless all of us.